In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression. We have all had boring teachers that make you sit and listen to them only lecture during the whole class and not remember a single thing that they taught. I think that Vygotsky's sociocultural theory can disprove this strategy and help show teachers how students really learn. We have learned about many theories this semester. We've learned about Piaget, Vygotsky, behaviorism, and the multiple intelligences. All of these are great theories for many reasons. These theories paved many roads for education experts and psychologists as well. The Vygotsky sociocultural theory developed around the same time as Piaget was starting to develop his ideas in the 1920s and 30s. And while Piaget's theory is widely supported, I believe that Vygotsky's theory will be the most helpful to my future as an art teacher. Piaget's theory simply doesn't emphasize group learning like it should. I believe learning happens the most when other people are around to help you. The theory suggests that social interaction leads to continuous step-by-step -step changes in children's thoughts and behavior that can vary greatly from culture to culture. There are three ways a cultural tool can be passed from one individual to another. The first one is imitative learning, where one person tries to imitate or copy another. The second way is by instructed learning, which involves remembering the instructions of a teacher and then using these instructions to self-regulate. The third and final way that cultural tools are used to pass to others is through collaborative learning. This involves a group of peers who strive to understand each other and work together to learn a specific skill. However, Vygotsky viewed language as man's greatest tool. It means for communicating with the outside world. He believed that language develops from social interactions for communication purposes. In the classroom, teachers and students collaborate in learning and practicing four key skills, summarizing, questioning, clarifying, and predicting. The teacher's role in this process is reduced over time. Vygotsky's theory also feeds into the current interest of collaborative learning, suggesting that group members should have different levels of ability so more advanced peers can help the less advanced members operate within their zone of proximal development. As a future teacher, I hope to incorporate Vygotsky's theory by implementing group work between artists so students can learn from their peers. At a high school level, it is definitely harder to learn a skill like drawing or painting, especially when many kids have already told themselves they can't do so. It'll be my job to show them that if you watch others close enough, you too can do what they do.